everybody, welcome to Jinhan Labs Art. In this video, I actually would like to uh, offer a commentary, the process I go through, the struggles I had, um, basically a critique of my own work. <laughs> so put some, put your comments in there and uh, enjoy this video. And don't forget to press the like button. Thank you very much. So the material I use are um, mostly charcoal, uh, mine stick, um, sacred charcoal piece and charcoal pencil black and white uh, kneaded eraser and uh, chamois cloth and I am working on an easel uh, with Strathmore paper 18 by 24 and I so my setup is I have a, an arm attached to the easel at the top and a webcam attached to the arm so right now that's why it's all distorted because it's overhead so if anyone has suggestions on how to set up a video better than this distorted look, please comment and let me know. So I'm using the grid method because um, the image source that I have is on a monitor and the monitor is actually angled towards me. So the image also is gridded off and um, on the paper, um, since it's 18 by 24, it's gridded off pretty evenly at 2 by 2, 2 inches per square by 2 inches. And I do have numbers on the side and they're ju they're just to help out when I look up and down on paper to monitor. Okay so the first thing I do is I start outlining the shape of the head and I indicate the hairline, the hair, and then I block out the big shapes. So after the outline and blocking, I would then pick an interesting area to start off with. So I wanted to start out with the eyes, but that didn't go well. So I went back to the nose and the mouth, and that did not go well either, because that was a big struggle. So the source of the picture had even lighting, and so that's why it was hard to get the shapes of these two parts. Um, so I really had to rely on the, the grid lines or even the lines and in measuring and I did not figure that out until uh, later on. So I actually um, even stopped working on this for a while, for a couple of days actually. Uh, I just almost decided to give up <laughs> but actually I came back to it and because uh, I had to finish it. So I came back to the drawing several days later and I decided to tackle the eye. So for the eye, the upper lid had a certain angle and I had to get that correctly. I also have a tendency of drawing the eyeball just super large. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too many manga magazines or watching too many anime. <laughs> so anyway, after careful measuring uh, several tries, I was able to uh, get the uh, shape of the eye correctly and the eyelid pretty pretty good I think. So because the eye area is uh, very detailed. I had to sharpen my uh, vine stick so that's why I just went through the hair area and just you scrub it there and uh, sharpen it up. So you see me uh, jumping around in other areas working a little bit here and there. Uh, I just have a tendency I, that I do. So after drawing the screen left eye there's new markings and landmarks that I could, could use to do the nose and I think that helped out a little bit better. Um, the hardest part for me for the nose is sometimes the uh, nostrils. Just getting that shape was, uh, is difficult. And for the eyebrows, um, it's not exactly the same look. I just indicated about how some of the notable markings are for the eyebrows. And just to resemble how the subject looks like. For the screen right eye, um, I had struggles with making that one bigger, so I had to really adjust it and uh, really measure it off the uh, screen left eye, just draw like imaginary lines or even taking the grid box and sectioning it off even more just to get it right. So after I was satisfied with the eyes, um, I went back to the mouth and at this point it was easier but I still had to do careful measurements um, at least the width was easier then because you just basically point the eyeballs down 
and you get the width of it and then drawing a smile line um, the line between the lips <laughs> uh, that took uh, just some careful uh, measuring and after that once you get the smile right the lips will come and uh, it made it so much easier so I was happy after several tries so here I'm continuing rendering uh, pushing the charcoal working it and I'm getting the shapes darker pushing the values and I started on working the ear but then I took it out and I'll tell you why When I first took the picture of the subject, uh, we uh, it was just a quick snap, I think. Um, so we, we were not face to face directly. It was just a quick snap off my uh, Samsung phone, and I, I would say, "Hey, it looks good enough. I could see your face. It's good, <laughs> good lighting." So uh, now that I look at it again, uh, when I'm getting to the air part, it's like, "Oh, this is not a good picture. I should." view it carefully next time because uh, if you can see the ear is slightly not a lot of the ear on the screen left side because his head is kind of turned um, so I was thinking not to draw the ear because it looks kind of uh, doesn't look right but then it's like if I don't draw the ear the other side has a, has more of an ear uh, then it, it will show only one ear and uh, that doesn't look right either so I eventually decided uh, okay let's put the ear in um, but it wasn't the focus uh, of this portrait drawing study so I, I decided to put the ear in and uh, I think it looked okay with uh, that little bit of ear just there <laughs> and finally once I get to the hair area it's almost done um, I just basically block it with black in this case and um, he has some grays and whites in there so I don't fully render it as I think I should um, but for his hair I think from from rough gesturing and indication it worked out okay but uh, the hair is something that I, I really need to work on and in the future maybe it'll, I'll have better rendering hair so um, I hope you enjoyed this commentary video um, please hit the subscribe button if you watched it through up to now. Thank you very much um, and look forward to uh, seeing your comments and um, I'll be uploading more in the future.